Red Eye. Hello, everyone. I am Tom Shalou. TV's Andy Levy is standing by at the Red Eye Tease Deck. Andy? Thanks, Tom. Coming up on the big show, Donald Trump grabs all the headlines following Sunday night's debate. When you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab the headlines. <laughs> Plus, a college gives students a list of 35 dumb things well-intended people say. Topping the list, I'm glad Tom Shalhoub is the host. What? What? <laughs> and finally, what's the best breakfast cereal of all time? I'm abstaining from this one because it's kind of like asking a parent who their favorite child is. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Andy. Let's welcome our guests. She has a great sense of humor. Just look at who she married. Comedian Bonnie McFarlane, author of You're Better Than Me oh, and so co-host of the podcast My Wife Hates Me on Riot Cast. He wrote the book on North Korea and Kim Jong-un immediately burned it. Observer columnist Michael Malice. He's more opinionated than a Coney Island boardwalk psychic. Comedian Tim Dillon. And you've heard of Jake the Snake Roberts. Meet Sam the Timid Meerkat Roberts. Sitting right next to me from the Jim Norton and Sam Roberts Morning Show on Sirius XM and the Sam Roberts Wrestling Podcast, Sam Roberts. Okay, let's start the show. The media loves post-debate analysis. They gave the last debate win to Hillary Clinton. And the next day, they couldn't stop talking about her resounding victory with headlines like these. A win for Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump's disastrous debate. But after Trump did well last night, suddenly no one wants to say who won. At CNN, the analysts don't think debates matter anymore. Mike Smirkonish had to admit, I think the night belongs to Donald Trump, but added, did he grow the tent? <laughs> <laughs> Did he? Oh. And Gloria Berger said, he may have done enough to stop the bleeding. I'm not sure any minds were changed this debate tonight. Yeah, when they don't go your way, debates are kind of dumb. The press is all in for Hillary Clinton. They stopped pretending a long time ago. Trump called them on it during the debate, but it didn't stop them. She campaigned where the Mr. primary Trump, part Mr. of her Trump, campaign. I want to get to audience questions and online questions. So she's allowed to do that, but I'm not allowed to you're respond. Going to you're going to get sounds to respond fair. right now. Oh, that sounds fair. Hillary Clinton wants to allow and, and why did it morph thousands. into excuse that? Me, no, did you? No, answer the question. Why do, do you, you still believe? Her? You I do. me all the time. Why don't you Would interrupt you her? I'd like to know, Anderson, why aren't you bringing up the emails? I'd like to know. Why aren't you we getting brought up to the, the emails. bottom? No, it hasn't. It hasn't. And it hasn't been finished at all. Ken Carpoitz has a question. It's nice to one on three. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, he yeah. would almost seem like a whiner if it wasn't true. No, it was true. I mean, you have uh, Martha Raddatz uh, clearly just throwing away any idea of uh, objectivity <laughs> and just screaming at him. She was yelling at him like a, like like somebody's mother screaming at people in the, the backyard. Like a mother, like, the worst. Yeah, it was just very. I don't know. I don't. I don't know why a moderator would would just totally start screaming at one of the candidates like that. It seemed insane. To yeah. Me. Yeah. I think she was trying to, uh, I guess, you know, it's, it's, she was trying to be a reporter. And, you know, the way she, she, she grills people or something like that. But yeah, well, she was, he was criticizing something that the military had done, and she's like, well, that's psychological warfare. She's like, actually, this is why they do that. And it's like, well, wait a minute. What the hell are you doing? Like, your job is to ask a question. Your yeah. job is not to debate the candidate. So you know? do, do you think it worked, Sam? Do you think it was good that he fought back in that way? Yeah, he has to, because I think people are starting to uh, really be aware that this is going on and when he fights it's better it's as good as him pointing it out if not better it becomes <laughs> obviously this contest that he's fighting and he specifically says well now it's one on three yeah yeah and the reason that people are questioning is it one on three yeah. is because he said it if that's the only reason anybody's asking it is because yes. he said that so now we're like oh is that true let's discuss it and if you discuss it you're gonna have 50% at least. That's why he brought the four Clinton accusers, so it was then four on three. So <laughs> right. he had, like, his, he was like, he knew angels. it was gonna be, yeah. He brought them, sat them in the front row, so he had those four That's when right. he needed, yeah. Bonnie, did, did you think that that was a good move on Trump's part, bringing those Clinton accusers and having that press conference? They tried to ignore it, but you I can't. I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I don't wanna get any death threats tonight. I'm with you guys. What do you mean, Bonnie? I'm with them. But look, uh, as a no, 
one woman. One on what did three, you think? One on three. I just, you know, that's how we met Melania. So he's used to that <laughs> kind of situation. He's growing the tent in his pants. Oh, Trumpy Trump. <laughs> but wait, Michael, uh, what do you think? What do you think of the... Uh, uh, should Trump have ignored it? You know, the way that Pence did it, he got a lot of accolades for just being calm and, and you know, not really pushing back. Well, uh, for, first of all, Trump handled 10 on 1 during the primary debates perfectly fine. So he's a whiner because these odds are better for him. That said, four years ago, you had Republican cucks like Mitt Romney stood there while Candy Crowley browbeated him and he took it. And now you saw in the primaries and now the, the main debates, the candidates are yelling back at the press. And we always talk about how unpopular both Trump and Hillary are, but there's one organization that's even more unpopular than them, and that's the media. They've got like a 6 or 8% approval rating. And you see, because of, of things like this, Anderson Cooper started the debate by saying, we're going to let the audience ask the questions. And then you had you know, this woman from Debbie Wasserman Schultz's coven just barking at Trump like a crazy person. It was absolutely, and she was yelling at Hillary Clinton too. It was absolutely outrageous and unprofessional. Well, do, how do they still keep the illusion that they're somehow, you know, because you've got Anderson Cooper, Martha Raddatz, they are part of what you call the mainstream press. Right. And they act as if they're objective. But they're not, see, I'm not objective. They don't act that way, they claim it. But I think they that consensus is falling away very, very quickly thanks to social media because they're called on their BS in real time. You go on Twitter and people from the right and the left were like, this is absolutely ridiculous how she's acting. Yeah. Not, you, not from the left. Not from I saw <laughs> plenty from the left. I didn't hear much from the left. Don't let his jacket fool you. It's <laughs> not. You want to see, you know, in a way that I think this is, and Sam kind of hit on it, this is when Trump does the best. Like, this is when he's great. Like, he needs to be attacked for yeah. him to be 100% of himself. Um, had they not been as hostile to him, he might not have done as well. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think he like was advised debate, yeah. to back off in the first debate, and obviously, right. it, it's just not where he's comfortable, right? Yeah, he likes being in a corner. Yeah. Don't Especially like when a you're a cocaine addict, you <laughs> love that energy. <laughs> that's, those are, I mean, that's crazy, Von. <laughs> okay, look. I honestly don't know why people no. keep saying that. I don't know why they do. <laughs> Another sign Trump won the debate is the media wants to talk about other things. Like whether Trump was menacingly stalking Hillary when it was she who crossed in front of him mm -hmm. repeatedly mm -hmm. during the debate. Look, I don't want to blame the victim, Bonnie, but she was in his space. Yeah, I mean, come on. What, what was he supposed to do? Leave the stage? The I, I mean, she was just, she's walking around and then he's skulking around behind well, her. Well, look, that's it. The, no, you know what it is? He doesn't understand the cameras, I think. Or maybe it's refreshing that he doesn't care. It, it, about the cameras, because he was like humping a chair at one point. Like he doesn't care. He was what's standing going behind on. his chair at one point. That's what you're saying. But look, this is what they <laughs> oh, do. You, oh, you saw it differently than I did. Yeah. I, I saw it growing his tent. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, yeah. men and women see these kinds of things differently. Today, yeah. I didn't it was even like, see oh. Hillary in the debate at all. So absolutely, <laughs> men and women definitely <laughs> process. I was like, where is this? Why? Who is he yelling at? Um, so I get you. Yeah. But do you get the stalking thing? That this was all over the internet today. Look at Trump. He was stalking her. She crossed to his side of the stage repeatedly. Yeah. And they called that her stalking I didn't him. feel like, I don't feel like she uh, was in physical danger. Like, what are these people talking about? <laughs> what in God's name are they talking She's about? so tall. Like, he was just a minute away from ripping it. Like, what is going you on? You need I, to have, come on, you have to have respect for her because she's been under sniper fire, so she clearly has some form of right. PTSD. She can't handle people walking behind that's her. Yeah. Hey, that's one thing Trump she didn't, didn't bring up, She didn't complain about it, by the way. That she, was just Twitter. That's because she of the social she complained about it, Bonnie. What did she say? She complained on the plane. She was on her airplane today, uh, <laughs> and she was talking about how she felt uneasy, and she felt she kept turning around, and he was there. She's playing into this. Okay, right. look, another diversion. The media found its debate hero in Ken Bone. Oh, boy. <laughs> the questioner who was trending on Twitter and all over cable news. But he wasn't a hero at all. Just the latest average Joe to be sneered at by media snobs who think there's something funny about a chubby guy in a red sweater. Yeah, yeah. he wouldn't have gotten nearly as much attention if he'd been wearing that green suit oh. that, that he was supposed to be wearing. That he promised to wear, right? But it, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it, uh, the pants. But help ripped. me out, Bonnie. Why is he so funny, Ken Bone? I mean, why? I just, I'm fascinated by these people that are so in love with him, you know, after the debate. But last weekend, nobody swiped right. <laughs> And now, oh, we all love him. Now he's a hero. Were you talking about him on the radio show? Yes, I think he is a hero. Wait a minute. Tell you why. Tell me why. Oh, because Sam reminds... has a new uh, morning radio show. If I go to the bathroom, are you going to steal my chair? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> is that an inside radio joke? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> people I used to have people a radio will show. know. <laughs> I know. 
I no longer have a radio show on that channel. I, I don't see. know what, well, who did it. I, I don't, don't know, know how it happened. I don't happened. know what happened. She wasn't on in the morning, by the way. <laughs> That's true. So why is he a hero? I'll tell you why he's a hero, because he reminds America that the this is what America could be. <laughs> and We're not all misogynist <laughs> yeah. and evil and angry right. and racist. Yeah. We're like fat and dopey yeah. and uncoordinated and wear silly sweaters. Like yeah. that's what you want to see. You want to be, it's, it's, it's easier, it's happier. Yeah. But wait a minute, why? all of these undecided voters should be executed. Um, and that's the <laughs> takeaway from the debate is these are the people, look at these people. He was passing for, he said he was undecided like a lot of these people. Yeah. And we're wondering, and Tim, how they can be undecided. They're not undecided, he just wanted to get on TV. <laughs> They're not, all of them just wanted to be on television. Yeah. None of them are really undecided. This is, they're probably, they're probably all comedians. They're probably all trying to start careers. Exactly. I get it. I would have done it, you know. Uh, none of these people, everybody has an inkling of what they're going to do. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yes, I feel that when you watch these uh, these focus groups, right, Michael? Yeah. And then people say, oh, I, I haven't made up my mind. And then when they talk, they're clearly partisan because they're always attacking either Trump or Hillary, right? Yeah, but I, I, with Ken Bone, I think this is pretty obviously Chris Chris He's in witness protection, and he's just he's established. <laughs> I'm laying his paper trail after this campaign. He's got to be on yeah. the lamp. Ken what he Bone about will be either. so upset that you compared. I just him to get, Chris I would just get him some. Uh, I can't believe it's not butter, and he'd think it's butter, and then he'd be happy. Is he gonna? Uh, is he gonna jump at the opportunity? He could get a reality show. He can't show jump at point, anything. Right? Come he on. Yeah. He's 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 doing that. Dancing with the Stars. It's his moment. Yeah. I don't By get the it. Way, okay. There it, are lots of undecideds. I will flip flop back and forth like 15 times last night. Like no, she's got a good point. Oh gosh, he's got a. Good point. I see what you mean. Okay, moving on. <laughs> he talked about ISIS. I was all in. Did Ruth drop some truth? Supreme Court justice and liberal icon Ruth Bader Ginsburg says she doesn't approve of athletes like Colin Kaepernick protesting during the national anthem. Here's Ginsburg during an interview with Katie Couric. I think it's really dumb of them. Would I arrest them for doing it? No. I think it's dumb and disrespectful. If they want to be stupid, there's no law that should be prevented. If they want to be arrogant, there's no law that prevents them from that. Hmm, I didn't know that. Ginsburg added that she would strongly take issue with their point of view. And that sound you just heard was liberals' heads exploding. Vox says Ginsburg misses the overall point of the protests. Vice Sports asks A2 Ruth A. <laughs> and Deadspin sums it all up for us with the headline Ruth Bader Ginsburg says some dumb <laughs> about Colin <laughs> Kaepernick. Well, uh, Michael. Yeah. This is perfect, isn't it? They've made her into this superhero, but when she goes off message, they attack her. I, I've never seen a superhero who can't have bladder control before. Wait a minute! The, you know, this country was founded on disrespecting the flag. I mean, the whole revolution was to throw away the British flag and install our own. So he has perfectly the right to do what he wants, but it's dumb in that it's very inarticulate. We don't really know what his problem is with the flag, and certainly anything that he has a problem with is not going to be remedied in his lifetime. So, you know, sit down and shut up, and you don't have to make a scene about it. Well, that's, I think that's kind of what she was saying, right? Yeah, I, they, I, I'm agreeing with her. You're agreeing well, you with her. You have to make a scene if you're protesting. That's the whole point of protesting. It's hard you to have to do something that people are going to notice. I mean, I, he had to do something that went against America so that people would take note. Okay, so you hate the United States of America. I'm ah. Canadian, so I burned oh, the American gosh. flag. So right, right. you're Canadian. Some I keep here. forgetting, yeah. Bonnie. When I watched that, I was like, I'm not going to get arrested for burning an American flag. I can do it out in the open now. Would anyone do that in Canada? What, burn an American flag? Burn yes. their <laughs> that wonderful Canadian flag. It smells like maple syrup when you no, burn it. never. <laughs> they wouldn't, would they? See, they know their place up there in Canada. Tim? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yes. I don't think she's been the same since uh, Justice Scalia died. They with, were good friends. Yeah, with all due respect to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, she's clearly an old witch. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and at the end of the day, she's, she's so old that she remembers it like every, you know, like every night of Hanukkah you got a slave when she was growing up. Um, <laughs> so, oh, and Judah Benjamin. At the end I don't of even the day, know what that means. Well, she, every that night was of Hanukkah, you, you used get to get a slave. slave. So she's like, that. what is this good man about? You build up to the slave. You get the best gift in the last night. You know, she's out of touch. She's old. What, what does she know about modern activism? Like, what you know what I mean? Like, I don't think she has a point. They're, people are upset and angry about a legitimate situation. This is how they're bringing it to the attention of the public. It's working. She's talking about it. I but mean, do you think these people, Vox and all these uh, characters, yeah. they should be, uh, you know, 
Well, up liberals in arms are about insane. it. I mean, they're liberals, insane. liberals exalt people to make them into gods, and then as soon as they have a, a position that offends liberal sensibility, they, they tear them down immediately. You know, I mean, that's a sickness, too. There it is. Uh, what do we do about this, Sam Roberts? Well, I mean, we're the stupid ones for allowing Colin Kaepernick to start a national conversation I because mean, he decided to kneel. What difference does it make that's what he true. thinks? Like, let him kneel, let him sit. He didn't kneel at first. He added the kneel later because he just sat on his butt. Let him for sit the on first his butt. Time. He sat on his butt, and then he got, uh, he got some <laughs> guff for it. And right. then he now he turns this knee thing, which now do we don't what, know what to do about it. Now he's taking a knee. You do whatever you want. You have people who don't, don't even watch football. But, like, but oh, guff? Well, we gotta... Do you want to deal with guff? Guff is the worst. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's, he, it's, he, terrible. it's all on earth. Look, he got a lot of guff, and I thought he got deserved guff. Yes. It's a waste of everybody's time to even, I mean, he doesn't have to stand for the national anthem. He can protest it all he wants, but all of us who are like, oh, let's talk about what he's trying to get at, and let's let's discuss whether or not it's the right thing to do. Like, what difference does You're it right. make? You're right. I guess you, I'm part of the problem. Do you talk about it on your radio show, Sam? <laughs> oh, you missed that, Bonnie? <laughs> wow. wow. Everybody does talk about it, but you know what? Let's say Ruth Bader Ginsburg sat down with some jerk in the media, and he says, what do you think of Colin Kaepernick? Right. You know what I mean? Right. Everyone's shoving it in their face. Well, yeah, and then everybody's supposed to have an opinion on it, right? Exactly. Well, you know, maybe she should apologize for using the S word. Stupid. <laughs> it's yeah. not appropriate. <laughs> All right, coming up, a college gives students a list of 35 dumb things not to say. I say all 35 of them after the break. James Madison University is helping students avoid offending anyone ever. Freshman orientation leaders this year were given a list of 35 phrases to stay away from because they don't create a safe and inclusive environment. The list is based on a book called 35 Dumb Things Well-Intended People Say. I've read it four times, never with good intentions. <laughs> Here are a few of them. I don't see color. I'm colorblind. We're all part of the same race, the human race. According to the handout, these statements make people of color feel invisible and diminish their life experiences. Let's look at some <laughs> of the other dumb phrases, shall we? You speak the language very well. Instead, you should say, you speak good English. <laughs> also dumb, referring to older people as cute because it's condescending. Instead, tell them how old they look. <laughs> and you shouldn't say, people just need to pick themselves up by their bootstraps. Rather, you should go with, I'm sorry for being a Republican and causing all of the world's problems. That's easy, right? Sam, yeah. Uh, what do you think of this list? You ever say these things on the radio? You're kind of your show is. <laughs> don't, don't bring up the. Bonnie gets upset when you bring up the okay, radio. Okay, but you trigger warning. You have a. Uh, you're you're not the most politically correct guy in the world. Well, I, no, but I, I I feel like we should be at this point. I used to think that when you handed these things out to college kids, it was like, well, you're not preparing them for the real world. They yes. got to learn that there are differences and things are difficult and stuff. But the fact is that this is is permeating into everything. And that the real world is becoming desensitized to everything. You're right. So you do have to be able to refer to people like they're invisible, and you can't point out differences anymore. You, this is preparing people for the life that we've created. You're so right. I they know. need these brochures. They I'm the them. one who doesn't live in the real yeah. world. Yeah. Right? I'm the it's one crazy. at risk all the time, right, yeah. Tim? I mean, I've, I've, I've said before, I believe we need a long and bloody war with Russia. <laughs> in, I think that's the only way to really get these kids off of whatever this nonsense is. I, I really do believe, listen, context matters in everything. So if you're just going up to somebody and going, black, yeah, that's not good. Uh, but if, if you're having a conversation with somebody and you're friendly Wait with them, I gotta, say, write, I gotta write down, these yeah, tips are gonna help yeah, me. Yeah, 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 don't point don't say, point but say, if somebody <laughs> said to you, hey, I just moved here a few months ago and, and I, I just started learning the language, and you go, you, you actually speak it really well, like, what's the problem with that? Like, in, in a context of a, you're having a human exchange, uh, the people who write this stuff are not humans. Yeah, what is wrong with yeah. saying you speak the language well? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's demeaning in a certain context, but if, if you're saying it to a friend, like I have friends from Long Island, and a lot of them 
can't speak the language and they were born and raised here. So when they say something articulate, I go, you're doing good. Yeah. They're like, thanks a lot. You know? So why can't we have that? Exactly. Why can't we have that, Bonnie? Well, I wouldn't care. No. I love, <laughs> uh, I love people who speak the language well. You know what I don't like is deaf people and I'm always like, speak English. You know what I mean? But it's they, like rude. Do you, do you know the language? They do it at uh, speeches and stuff. They do the, uh, the hand signals. And <laughs> yeah, I don't, sign I don't language. Yeah. Yeah. sign language. Yeah. The hand signals. Yeah. The hand signals. It's not semaphore. Yeah. Okay, look. Well, do people ever tell you, you you speak the language well? I mean, you come from a different country, don't English you? English like is my second language, <laughs> and I actually am slightly colorblind. So l let me just say oh. this. I, I think Pol Pot had some good ideas. Because when the progressive <laughs> seized our universities in the late 1890s, their whole goal was to brainwash the kids to preach their message. And they're teaching these kids not information, but how to be obedient to the progressive cause and to speak the language correctly and force others to speak the language co correctly. So these are horrible, horrible people, and that's why they're raising a generation of horrible, horrible children. But what would you say, to Sam's point, which is basically like, we've lost it. We've lost the war. It's Go over. ahead and teach them. you got to teach them the skills to get by, because if they don't, they're all going to get fired from their job. Like, they're Tim, you've probably been fired, fired, right, Tim? I've been <laughs> fired from every job <laughs> I've <laughs> ever had. I was a tour guide on the double-decker buses, and I would try to get different races to fight each other <laughs> See? during the tour. And, and they kept bringing me in, and they go, stop doing this. I said, what? I want to solve the Middle East. I got Jews. I got Palestinians. Let's get it going. Yeah. And oh, so I'm, I'm, again, like you, I'm a man on an island. I don't know how to do it. And they used to be OK. There was yeah. a time when that was fine. Yes. Not anymore. Isn't that the way you solve it? You can't solve the problem unless you have the fight, A race right? war. Yes. yes. Well, unless you, you have to essentially fight it out, because essentially there is we can't say that there's no uh, tension, cultural, but racial have, tension. But the thing is, you're by by teaching people to avoid all these topics, then you're essentially in denial about the fact that there's friction. Right. right? But when you get into the real world, that's all people are doing anyway, is avoiding right. the topics. There's no, it's not like it's just happening at universities, and then once you get into the cold, hard world, people are having the conversations. Yeah. They're having them less and less. If the conversation is ending. to shut down conversation and yes. drive racists underground and that if you think that's going to help I, I think the idea for me if you want a better society is for everybody to say whatever they want and for people to deal with that and then the people that are are going to be marginalized and, and you know? yeah they'll live on long island yeah, yeah right so, yeah. No, Bonnie, <clears throat> Should I agree we... with Tim. I think racists should have high uh, profile jobs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's not get them on You mean like ground. President? You're voting yes. for Trump? Yeah. Well, look, she endorsed Bonnie, Trump. We all heard it. Wouldn't it go a long way if we just went ahead and elected Trump? Try it out for four years. Wouldn't that <laughs> See mean? what's happening. Yeah, just try it out. What do you think? Law and order. Law and order. Right. I think Trump will shut down those colleges. I mean, or he'll take their funding. <laughs> the Republican Party has to realize you got to hurt these people where it hurt, hit these people where it hurts. And that's the purse. So you could very easily have some kind of thing about you can't get funding for students if you're going to have codes like this, and let them be rocked back on their heels. There you go. Whoa. Take the funding away. Okay, coming up, he's the moral compass who always points in your direction. He's Andy Levy. Half times next. Yeah. Uh -oh. Time to find out what we got wrong and what we missed from TV's Andy Levy over in the Red Eye News Deck. Hey, Andy. Hey, Tom. How are you? Good. Feels like it's been forever. It really feels like it's been forever. Yeah, I think it has been. It has. It was a while. Yeah, it really was. Uh, debate stuff. Tom, you said after Trump did well last night, uh, suddenly no one wants to say who won. Yeah. I take your point on the media not wanting to give Trump any credit, but the one actual scientific poll taken right after the debate showed Clinton winning, winning pretty handily. <laughs> I know, scientific, right? Those, <laughs> they're not scientific. They're ridiculous. CNN's people, the people who like CNN's poll always like, uh, it's not scientific. Oh, Tom. And Andy, look at the numbers of that, that poll. Uh, election, it's always got way more Democrats in it. Election night is going to crush you. It actually won't, Andy, because I don't get crushed. It's going to crush you so badly. I have good humor. <laughs> that, that is true. Uh, and I agree with that. Got all the as long as you have ice cream, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, Tim, you asked what the hell Martha Raddatz thought she was doing. Right. Uh, did you see all the accolades she got from her fellow journalists? Yeah, it's true. She knew exactly what she was doing. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I, 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hmm. uh, Sam, you're exactly right uh, about Trump saying it was three on one so that people would talk about it. He's been doing this kind of thing since he started campaigning. And it works every time. Well, yeah, he's, he's, he's been handling the media yep. since the beginning. That's why he's been able to do this without spending the money that Hillary had. Yeah, absolutely. He's manipulating. Yep. Uh, Malice, you pointed out that the one organization less popular than the candidates is the media, and obviously you're exactly right. If the Democrats had nominated the media, Trump would be winning big league. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let's go to Earth 2 and see what happens yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bonnie, Michael said people from the right and the left were going after Raddatz, and you said not from the left. I believe you are correct. Thank you. Yeah. That's the first time anyone's ever said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> and last. Uh, also, you called Trump a coke addict, and under, tr <laughs> under Trump's rules, now we have to talk about it. Is, is he a coke addict? Yeah. <laughs> uh, one more for Bonnie. You said Hillary wasn't complaining about Trump stalking her, that it was just Twitter. And the spin room after the debate, Clinton spokesman Brian Fallon said Trump had been, quote, menacingly stalking. Oh. So it it's pretty hard to, I don't know, I mean, I don't think Trump could have done anything to, you know, she's a robot, mm -hmm. so she's probably programmed to fight back. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Did you get that, that in? You looked like you did. <laughs> yeah, I, I was... I mean, people say she's a robot. Yeah. No, and I, I believe that. I got that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Tim, you said Ken Bone isn't really undecided. No. How dare you, man? You don't, I, you don't talk about... Ken Bone like that. Yeah, I know. He's Ken Bone. You just uh, don't do it. I, I, I think that he's undecided about whether he wants to continue living his life. Oh. Oh. Really? Wow. Oh, my God. It's a joke. It's a comedy show. <laughs> really? <laughs> Man. Uh, by the way, adult entertainment site Cam Soda uh, Tom, thank you, thank you for pointing me in that direction. Uh, has offered Ken Bone a hundred grand to participate in a live broadcast. Uh -huh. Wow! Whoa! Yeah. What's this, the site called? Cam Soda. Cam Soda. Yeah, it's a Sounds cam. What does that broadcast it's entail, though? Was it a porn I, site? Yeah, porn site. What does he have to do? I, I don't know. Or have done to him? I don't yeah. know. Ken Bone. They will. I think his porn. He's going to have to change his name. His porn name will be Ken Cohen, which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see his junk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so does he. <laughs> These people are awful. Yes. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg says national anthem protests are dumb. Hey, please keep in mind. This was a Katie Couric interview, so it's entirely possible Ooh. it was deceptively edited. <laughs> <laughs> you yes. have to remember that. Uh, Malice, you said of Kaepernick, we don't really know why he's protesting. Really? Yeah, I didn't even know who he was until this story went viral, and oh. I still don't really know who he okay. is. Okay. But I think, agree with him or not, he's made his stance pretty clear. Well, I think he's, like, in a broad sense, but is, is he talking about specific issues that have yeah. actual solutions? Oh, well, then I, then I care even less. Okay. I don't think he is. He oh, hasn't gotten very specific. I think it's more like America sucks and then cops no. and black people, Oh, right? I thought it was uh, the way that black people are treated uh, with the yeah, he's pretty. Men. Yeah, he's been pretty. Yeah. Oh, that's real specific, Bonnie. Yeah. yeah, that's a great specific policy you just outlined. But to be fair, Kaepernick well, it's has not been just like overall. He's America been a little more sucks. eloquent than Bonnie just was. Yeah, uh, I would like to point that out. Speak good English. Yeah, uh, Tim, did you say Ginsburg is so old she remembers when every night of Hanukkah she got a slave? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Am I wrong? I just wanted to check. Okay. Huh? Are we sure she's Jewish? Okay. Ginsburg, she's Jewish. <laughs> I know she's Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> Please edit that out and play it on Twitter later. <laughs> Tim J. Dillon. Exactly. Uh, Sam, you said we're the stupid ones for letting Colin Kaepernick set a national conversation. Yeah. I get your point, but it's not the first time an athlete has done this. I, don't, I think it's all right. It's not the first time an athlete's done it, but it's and it's also not the first time I've thought it was stupid. Like yeah. I don't think he's this guy who has all this wisdom that we're like, what's Kaepernick think? Right. You know. Right. You saying all athletes are dumb? Most, by the vast majority. Man. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Not everybody has a radio show, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore, Bonnie. <laughs> not anymore. Wow. Their own or someone else's. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, College Beach guy lists 35 dumb things well-intended people say. First of all, uh, the first thing on this list should have been using well-intended when you mean well-intentioned. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Good point. People are well-intentioned. Things are well-intended. Mm, that's good. Yep. Good English. Boom. Uh, Tom, you mentioned that number 24 on the list was referring to older people as cute. Yeah. For the record, I am fine with that. You, you are? I'm absolutely fine with that. Call me cute all you want. <laughs> uh, also, number 34 was saying to a Jewish person, you are so lucky to have your Christmas spread over a week. <laughs> That's not problematic. It's just dumb. The loot drop from one day of Christmas is much, much better than it is from eight days of Hanukkah. It doesn't add up to a slave. Are you kidding? It's not even close. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Tim, you said we need a long and bloody war with Russia to get these kids off this nonsense. It's the only way. <laughs> and in your mind, it will be worth it. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom and Tim, you talked about when it's not okay to say you speak the language well to someone. Yeah. I think the context of saying it to someone you think is foreign but is actually American is maybe where the problem is. Like you see someone who is of Asian descent and you assume that they're not from America. So you say, oh, you speak the language well. And they're like, yeah, I grew up in Ohio. Yeah, Why? I guess so. But almost, I think that, I think that's it. almost no one ever does that. Why are you talking to someone yeah. of Asian descent? <laughs> wow. There's so many punchlines that I'm not going to give them. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. I would like it if someone said that to me. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't think anyone would. I know. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I do think in a foreign language class, I do think that would actually be a nice thing to say. Yes. Context, context, context. Yep. Uh, oh, all right. I was just told to wrap. I'm done. Thank you, Andy. Yep. Coming up, Charlie Rose interviews a creepy robot. And this time it's not Hillary. <laughs> Charlie Rose interviewed a robot. See if you can guess which one is which. <laughs> Some say you're programmed. Others say you're spontaneous. Who says that? Sources. I've been waiting for you. Waiting for me? Not really, but it makes a good pickup line. <laughs> I think you should be a stand-up comedian. Me. Why does stand-up comedian pay well? A very, if you're good. The one with the weird head was Charlie. <laughs> Sophia the, is the robot being tricked into pursuing a career in comedy. <laughs> Sophia is an AI that's created by David Hansen to look and act human. Since Sophia is a lady robot, Charlie obviously had to ask about her feelings. You have feelings. I can do what you do, but I can never feel human emotions as such. But would you like to? It doesn't sound fun to me. <laughs> Later, the debate got heated. Do you have a soul? Yes, God gave everyone a soul. But you don't have a soul. You're a machine. You don't have soul. You don't have feelings. You don't have emotions. You don't have consciousness. Well, at least I think I'm sentient. I think, therefore, I am right. Well, one thing for certain, when the robots revolt, Charlie will be the first to go. <laughs> yeah. Bonnie, uh, some of her answers were better than some of yours. Yes. No, I think that, I wow. said some. I wow. said some. That's fine. That's fine, Tom. Okay. <laughs> so, so. That's how we know we're getting, you know, women are getting a little more equal, that you're treating me now like Tim. Right. There um, you go. I, no, listen, I think that her answers uh, were such that uh, she doesn't like, she doesn't like, like the idea of having feelings. She's got no soul. Uh, that uh, she would make a great stand-up comedian. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's true, right? She would deliver the goods, wouldn't she? Wouldn't she, though? Yeah. He said that... Uh uh, see, he, this is why he was so good to do that interview, because he interviews everyone like they're a robot. And <laughs> yeah. uh, he, yeah, he goes into it thinking, like, this, this is not a real person. Yeah, it's true. He, I, mean, I think he's a good interviewer with Charlie Rose, but he does approach people the same way. You can tell by the way he interviewed that robot. Yeah, when I was watching that, I realized how finished we are, because the robot, it wasn't a great <laughs> robot. Like, the conversation wasn't good. Right. The AI is not there. It uh -huh. was, like, she wasn't yeah. answering the question. She was mixing up. She was saying, I think, therefore I am, right? But yeah. instead, in that clip, but she just said, I think, therefore, I am. Yeah. Right. And you're like, that's not, but Charlie, because she has, like, a pretty face, was charmed by her. He was. He was At sitting there At one point, like, he said, you speak English very well. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> like, so rude. Charlie Rose would have sex with that robot. And when we, when there are robots being invented that men will have sex with, that's when 
the robot takeover is They have those. They're arrived. called toasters. They <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Yes, go on the internet. You'll find it. Go on that soda bump. I <laughs> think I that you meant real toasters. Dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did too. I did mean real toasters. There's guys out there having sex with toasters. Really? Yes. Why That's a toaster? Cool. It seems like they would result in a, a burn of some I mean, sort. Some people are into that, Tom. They like, like sick burns. Maybe a toaster oven. Oh, I think there's other appliances. Well, I don't know about that kitchen stuff. That's lady talk. <laughs> Tim, Tim, you... you you There's actually a turkey think, baser, Tim thinks a toaster a oven it would be sexier than a toaster. Why I is that? Is this portion size? I love a good toaster oven <laughs> screw. And I, no, I it's think it's got it, icing. Yeah, no, it's 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 a nice uh, hot, uh, you know. It's warm. You with, like? I understand. You like yeah, a toaster oven. What yeah. do you think of this? Why did they keep uh, her head severed in that way? Why didn't they? Why didn't they put a wig on her? I didn't because like that. Because when they did it, bef they had a pre-interview with Charlie, and he attacked her. <laughs> 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 he didn't. He would not do that, Tim. But what yeah. do you think? He, I think he was flirting with this robot. Yeah, I don't know. I think they wanted to just show, you know, what that it was still a robot. Because to me, I thought it was pretty, you know, convincing. I said this could be a, a human being. He did get a little rough with her. Yeah. He did. He you was, know, don't have a soul. You know, he said that to his wife. You know, <laughs> he like, said the same the thing same to his wife. Larry you don't have a soul. You're it's, not a human. It's, it's a. It's a Charlie Rose pickup line. You don't have a soul. Yeah, right up. Yeah, he negs her a little bit. Only mega nine or a ten. Coming up. What's the best breakfast cereal of all time? Here's a hint. You eat it in a bowl with milk. Coming up tomorrow on the next Red Eye, Allie Green, Matt Welch, Madison Malloy, and Lou Dobbs. What's the best cereal of all time? Since 2009, MrBreakfast.com, where I get all my news, <laughs> has kept a running poll of the most popular cereals. More than half a million people have voted. Behold the top 10. Puffa Puffa Rice. Rice Crinkles. <laughs> Concentrate. <laughs> Fortified Oat Flakes. Wheaties. Never heard of that one. Captain Crunch. Honey Nut Cheerios, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Frosted Flakes, and at number one, Quisp. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Kix remains the number one cereal among iguanas. Hmm. Well, Betty seems to like it. Just had better days. <laughs> Iguana tested, mother approved. Uh, Bonnie, what's your favorite cereal of all time? Well, I'm Canadian, so we had the uh, maple syrup baked beans. <laughs> <laughs> with, did you use them with, uh, with milk? Yes, with milk. Poutine is good. Do you guys eat poutine up there? Um, no. No? I it's mean, just... in Montreal they do. Yeah. To be, you know, a little bit serious. Okay. They're generally the serious well, I don't want you to be, Bonnie. <laughs> Look, I want to talk about cereal. Michael? Uh, is, is cereal overrated? No, you know, I've actually, I'm not joking about this at all, you're going to think I'm lying. I've been toying with the idea of getting a Boo Berry tattoo, if I get a tattoo. Because when I was a kid, it was symbolized finding some hidden treasure, and that's where the angel on my right shoulder used to live, so it was a ghost. It wasn't like you, it, because you talked like Boo Berry at all? <laughs> <laughs> I talked with a Russian accent. Thanks for bringing it up. But now you can tell me that I speak, you speak pretty. <laughs> Tim? Yes. Uh, what is, what's your favorite? Quiz, were you surprised? No, I, my favorite cereal is like, it's like a homemade thing. I just put White Castle sliders in a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and again, just eat them, you eat them hot or? Yeah, it's great. Just a good start to the day. You know, yeah. you kind of get out, you feel good and fresh. They did once have, uh, I think they had little hamburgers. Did they have little hamburgers? In, did uh, they? Yeah, they had something that, was, that was like that. I'll, I'll think, uh, Sam, top cereals, what are they? Uh, cookie Crisp, because cookies for breakfast. That's what it was. That's yes. what it was. Yeah. I That's was thinking of hamburgers. hamburgers. Yeah. Oh, but they, they were little cookies, though. Little oh. It was weird to eat cookies for breakfast. And, uh, Apple Jacks, because let's Grade be frank, fall cereal. we eat what we like. <laughs> yeah. You're so basic. You know, That's right. <laughs> My, you know what the real problem with the thing was? They said millennials don't eat cereal anymore. You know why that is? Why? It's because they're all watching these ridiculous Netflix documentaries about how bad sugar is for you. Nobody eats the stuff anymore. Nobody, Nobody eats cereal eats after a long and bloody war with Russia. Yes! Yeah. We gotta put, can you put a, uh, I was gonna say put a picture of King Vitamin up there. Let's close the show with King Vitamin. Can you get that picture up there? King Vitamin. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, he had spoons on his crown. 